So, let us um, start with the first example. So, here we have uh, a fixed vessel like this. It contains a saturated mixture of R134A initially at 100 kilo Pascal. And the volume of the vessel is also given. We now supply heat to the vessel until the contents reach the critical state. We are asked to determine the mass of the mixture and the heat transferred uh, to the contents of the vessel. So, as you can see this vessel is rigid. So, this undergoes a constant volume process. The final state is the critical state. That means, the property values are actually known. Okay. Let us see uh, how this comes about. So, here we have uh, properties of saturated R134A pressure table. So, here we can see that this is the critical state. So, the specific volume of the liquid, specific volume of the vapor are both the same at the critical state and that is the information that we will use. Uh, so, uh, the um, uh, you can also see that the internal the specific internal energy of the liquid and the vapor are the same. So, specific volume at the final state is known. We can make use of this information to carry out the analysis. Okay, so, the specific volume at the final state is 0 0.00197 meter cube per kilogram and the specific internal energy uh, may also be retrieved from the pressure table. Okay. Since it undergoes a constant volume process V1 is equal to V2 which is already known. So, the mass of the mixture may be evaluated uh, from the given volume of the vessel. So, M is equal to V over specific volume which gives us uh, the mass to be 10.15 uh, kilograms. So, if we take our system to be the contents of the vessel, the system looks like this. So, delta E equal to delta U equal to Q minus W, no displacement work or any other forms of work. Uh, so, W is equal to 0. So, we can now evaluate Q from this, Q is equal to delta U equal to M times U2 minus U1. U2 is already known to us, U1 has to be evaluated. So, at the initial state, the specific volume is known and it is at a pressure of 100 kilo Pascal. So, we go to the pressure table corresponding to 100 kilo Pascal, we retrieve the uh, specific volume of the liquid, saturated liquid and saturated vapor. And using this, we can calculate the dryness fraction. Let us see how this is done. So, you can see here that using the specific volume of the saturated liquid and saturated vapor. We can evaluate since the specific volume at the initial state is known, we can evaluate the dryness fraction to be equal to 0 0.0065. Okay. So, the mixture specific volume is known at the initial state, mixture specific volume is known and uh, we know the pressure. So, we know Vf and Vg. So, we can calculate the dryness fraction of the mixture using this expression and once uh, x1 is known, the specific internal energy at the initial state may be evaluated as Uf plus x1 times Ug minus Uf. Now, Ug and Uf may be retrieved corresponding to 100 kilo Pascal from the table. So, notice that this is Uf at 100 kilo Pascal, this is Ug at 100 kilo Pascal. So, we simply retrieve these values and calculate U1 because x1 is also known, x1 is also known. So, we get u1 to be equal to this. So, q is equal to m times u2 minus u1. So, the heat supplied comes out to be 2186.54 kilo joules. So, the important concept here is that uh, once we know the specific volume uh, at the initial state, we can calculate the dryness fraction and the property values of the mixture. So, basically we uh, located the state, the final state was given to be the critical state. So, we were able to locate that state initially. So, if I draw a PV diagram, okay. So, the um, uh, final state was given to be the critical state. So, so this is the final state and because the volume uh, of the vessel remains constant, it is a rigid vessel, uh, the working substance has undergone <coughs> a constant volume process. So, this is state 1 and the initial pressure is 100 kilo Pascal. But the dryness fraction at the initial state is not known. Okay, so, specific volume V2, uh, V1 is equal to V2. So, once I know the specific volume here, I can evaluate dryness fraction from this expression. 
and I can also evaluate the specific internal energy from this expression once the dryness fraction is known. Okay. So, we have discussed this earlier how to calculate properties in the two phase mixture region. If you have any questions, I suggest that you review that material and then go through the problem one more time. That is why in the initial part in the previous module, we talked about locating the state uh, on a PV diagram like this for a two phase mixture. And once you locate the state, we went through the uh, procedure of how to calculate property values like specific volume or specific internal energy and so on. Okay, Let us uh, look at the next example. A frictionless piston cylinder device contains 5 kg of saturated R134A vapor initially at 25 degrees Celsius. The vapor is compressed slowly until the volume is reduced by two thirds. Okay. So, please uh, pay close attention to this volume is reduced by two thirds of the initial volume. Heat transfer during the process with the ambient at 25 degrees Celsius keeps the temperature of the contents of the cylinder constant determine final pressure work done on the heat transfer. So, basically we have a situation like this. So, this contains R 134A. So, this is initially um, uh, at it initially I am sorry it initially contains 5 kg at 25 degrees Celsius and it is compressed slowly until the volume is reduced uh, by two thirds. Notice that it initially contains saturated R134A vapor. So, the initial state is saturated vapor and it is compressed until the volume is reduced by uh, two thirds of the initial volume. Temperature also remains constant. Okay. So, we can take this uh, to be our system obviously. Now, the initial pressure is not given, but the initial pressure is not uh, need not be explicitly given because it is stated that initially it contains 5 kg of saturated vapor. Okay. That means, the contents uh, will be at the saturation pressure. Okay. So, we uh, go to the table. So, corresponding to 25 degrees Celsius. So, here we go to the temperature table for saturated R134A. So, corresponding to 25 degrees Celsius their pressure is 665.80 kilo Pascal. Okay. So, the initial pressure is thus known. Okay. So, initial pressure P1 is equal to P sat of 25 degrees Celsius because it is initially uh, a saturated vapor. Okay. So, initial state is saturated vapor at 25 degrees Celsius mass is also given. So, from the temperature table, we can retrieve the following values. Pressure is also known and the pressure is equal to 665.8 kilo Pascal. Now, uh, if you actually look at the, uh, uh, the process that the, uh, uh, the R134A undergoes, we may draw it like this. So, so this is the initial state and the initial pressure is known. So, this is uh, so if I draw the isotherm, so 25 degrees Celsius and the initial pressure we retrieve to be 665.8, 665.8 kPa. Now, the saturated vapor is compressed while keeping its temperature constant. So, heat transfer takes place. So, its temperature remains constant. Notice that for its temperature to remain constant, it has to actually uh, follow the isotherm corresponding to 25 degrees Celsius. And because it is compressed, you know, uh, it has to go in this direction uh, since we are trying to increase its pressure. Okay. So, basically what happens is as we compress it because it is a saturated vapor, it condenses. And when it condenses, there is a decrease in the volume occupied by the mixture because the specific volume decreases as you can see. So, as we compress it, uh, there is condensation and reduction in volume. So, the pressure remains constant because of the condensation. Okay, so, it is undergoing a phase change. Just like what we saw before, when we moved the piston up, some of the water evaporated and occupied the additional space that was available. In this case, the opposite is happening. When we compress it, there is a reduction in the volume and some of the R134A condenses and causing the, uh, which is able to accommodate the reduction in volume. So, consequently, the pressure also remains constant. 
okay that is the important part so as the vapor is compressed isothermally it condenses okay so the reduction in volume to the due to the compression is accommodated by the reduction in uh, volume due to the condensation and conversion to liquid so this continues until all the vapor has condensed okay we are given that the volume reduces by two thirds which means the final volume is one third of the initial volume so v2 is equal to v1 over 3 which is equal to this now this is greater than vf corresponding to 25 degrees celsius which means that the final state is going to be somewhere over here otherwise as we compress it all the vapor, the vapor could condense entirely and as we continue to compress the final state could have ended up somewhere over here in this case because v2 is greater than vf the final state is still a two phase mixture inside this otherwise the process curve or process line would have looked like this so it comes like this then it would have gone up this uh, isotherm because we are maintaining the temperature constant and we would have uh, finally reached a compressed or subcooled liquid state since v2 is greater than vf we don't reach that state we still remain in the saturated mixtures region Okay, so x2 may be evaluated as v2 minus vf over this. So x2 comes out to be 0.3148. So here we have retrieved the values corresponding to T equal to 25 degrees Celsius. Let us just take a quick look. So corresponding to T equal to 25 uh, degrees Celsius, we can get vf, vg, uh, uf, and ug from the tables. Okay, so the final uh, specific uh, internal energy may also be evaluated. Notice that the uh, uh, the specific volume at the initial state is simply equal to Vg and the, and the specific internal energy at the initial state is simply equal to Ug. We can calculate the displacement work, there is no other form of work. So, displacement work is P delta V and the pressure remains constant. So, we may evaluate the work interaction as minus 68.644 kilojoules. Clearly, work is being done on the system. And if we apply first law to the system, we have delta E equal to delta U, no change in Ke or Pe equal to Q minus W. We are asked to calculate Q, so we rearrange this expression and get Q to be minus 609.084 kilojoules. So, as we do work on the system, it is clear that, so as we uh, do work on the system and compress it, it is clear that uh, heat is being lost to the surroundings. So, the temperature of the R134A remains constant because it is undergoing a phase change because we started with saturated vapor because it is undergoing a phase change the pressure also remains uh, a constant during this phase. The uh, next example uh, that we are going to look at involves uh, a frictionless uh, piston cylinder device like this. So, this contains R134A a certain amount which is actually 2.6 kg of uh, saturated or 134A mixture at an initial pressure of 500 kilo Pascal and um, occupying a volume of 0 0.1 meter cube. Actually, we know the specific volume, we know the pressure. So, with this just with these two uh, property values, we uh, should be able to establish that it is a saturated mixture of R134A. Anyway, the information is given in the problem statement, so we can make use of that. Okay, so the mixture expands according to the relation PV equal to constant until it becomes a saturated vapor, and we are asked to determine the final pressure, work done, and heat transferred. So, if I actually try to uh, show this on a, on a PV diagram, so initially. Uh, we have a saturated mixture at a pressure of 500 uh, kilo Pascal. So, this is 500 kilo Pascal, this is uh, state 1 uh, and the mixture expands according to PV equal to constant which means the pressure is going to decrease and finally, it becomes a saturated vapor. So, uh, the final state is going to be uh, on the saturated vapor line. The final pressure has to be determined. We do not know what the final pressure is so that needs to be determined. So, the process undergone by the uh, uh, by the two phase substance looks like this. So, this is given to be P V equal to constant. 
okay so so the initial specific volume may be evaluated as 0 0.0385 and the pressure is also given we can actually retrieve uh, the required uh, property values from the table vf and vg may be retrieved from the pressure table and uh, the specific internal energy may be calculated by using the value of x1 which is calculated by using the fact that the specific volume at the initial state is known. So, x1 comes out to be 0 0.934. So, we may evaluate the specific internal energy at the initial state as uh, 227.824. Okay? Now, the mixture expands according to PV equal to constant since uh, mass of the mixture remains a constant. So, it is given that PV equal to constant. So, if I divide uh, both sides by the mass, then I may write this as P times V over M equal to again another constant since the mass remains a constant. So, we may alternatively write this as PV equal to constant where V is the uh, specific volume. Okay? which means P2 V2 equal to P1 V1. Okay? Now, remember we need to uh, have or know two independent properties uh, to locate a, a given state. So, if I look at uh, the final state, I know that it is a saturated vapor. So, I have one piece of information. The second piece of information comes from this equation P2 V2 equal to P1 V1. Now, it may appear that um, there are actually two unknown quantities here, P2 is not known, V2 is also not known. However, you should remember that it is a saturated vapor, so V2 is equal to Vg of P2. So, that means there is really only one unknown in this, but that needs to be determined iteratively. So, if you do trial and error, you should be able to uh, get the final value of uh, P2 as 100 kilopascal. So, basically the trial and error procedure would go like this. We know that the uh, pressure decreases. So, we guess a certain value for pressure and we get the corresponding uh, Vg. We evaluate the product and see how close it is to P1 V1. So, basically this is what uh, we would do. Okay, So, this is the uh, pressure table. So, uh, uh, initial pressure is given to be 500. This is the uh, initial pressure. Now, uh, we know that the pressure decreases as the vapor expands. So, we may uh, take our initial guess for the final pressure to be 200. So, if we take the final pressure to be 200, then the, uh, uh, the specific volume of the saturated vapor is known. Okay? So, we take P2 multiply by V2 and see how close that is to P1 times V1. If it is not close, then we reduce, uh, we adjust our guess. So, we may actually uh, decrease our uh, pressure to some other value. Again, check the product, see how well it matches P1, V1. So, we do this by trial and error, uh, which is until we get a final value, which is actually acceptable. In this case, we can actually get the final value to be uh, 100 kilopascal. Okay? So, the specific volume at the final state is known and the specific internal energy, remember U2 is equal to Ug of P2. So, that is also known. Now, the work interaction for the process may simply be obtained from integral PdV. Since the relationship between P and V is known, we can evaluate this in a closed manner and get this to be equal to P1 V1 natural log of 5, which gives us the work interaction to be plus 80.472 kilojoules. As the uh, working substance expands, it is doing work on the surroundings, which is why we have a positive sign. Now, if we apply first law to the system consisting of the R134A, so basically our system is this. So, if we apply first law, we have delta E equal to delta U because there is no change in uh, Ke or Pe. So, delta E is equal to delta U equal to Q minus W and delta U itself may be written as M times u2 minus uh, u1. So, if you substitute the numerical values, we get uh, q to be 47.676 kilojoules. So, we are supplying heat to the working substance. It then expands until it reaches a, uh, a saturated vapor state. Okay? One important thing here, uh, again one common mistake that uh, students tend to make in this particular problem is that the moment you are given PV equal to constant, students assume the temperature to be constant. But you have to keep in mind that in this case, the temperature does not remain constant. 
but that is actually quite clear from this PV diagram. Notice that we are uh, actually uh, moving from uh, one uh, isotherm to another. So, for instance, we go from this isotherm to this, uh, this isotherm. So, the temperature uh, definitely does uh, change during the process, but that is because it is not an ideal gas, it is a two-phase mixture. So, that is something that you should keep in mind. So, it is not an ideal gas.